like to advertise on our YouTube channel, you can do so by going to unapologeticmomads.com. When you get there, click on the menu at the top right corner and click on the tab that says advertise with us. Once you get there, you will see the following paragraph. If you own a business, have a website, have created a product, or have a big event, etc., you can now advertise on a YouTube channel. In order to put your business, event, or product in front of a live audience, we are here to help you. Refer to the rates below and choose the option that best suits you. After you pay for your package, fill out the form below so that we can collect the information we need in order to start promoting your business, product, and or event in the next live broadcast. These include the website where the event, product, or business can be found if one exists. We recommend writing a two to three sentence description explaining your event, business, or product as well. Here we go. Oh, I think okay. it's muted, family. Everything good? Ella, your yeah. microphone's a little scratchy sound. Talk, Ella. Welcome to Thank our you. channel and whatnot. All right. Let me know if you can hear, because right now I can't. You can't hear yourself? Mm-mm. All right. Keep going. Welcome to our channel. I'm here a little bit. What's up, beautiful people? Let us know how all the mics are, family. <laughs> we just set everything up again. We got Natasha Muhammad in the building, Malachi Muhammad in the building, Cole. That's right. Allison, we here, family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Can you hear me talk to the mic? Make sure yes. testing, 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 testing. Peace, love, light to everybody out there. Hey, this, this, this music is really The music cool. is too nice. loud, huh? Oh, you like that? It's nice. I like that. Yeah, it. you might have to, uh, you might have to uh, say something, a freestyle or something. <laughs> yeah, I think the yes, I'm making sure loud. you can still hear me. Peace and love to Florida. Looking like Hot 97. Peace and love to uh, Tampa and Clearwater, Florida, man. Yeah, Jackson, man. Shout out to all the family. Yeah. Could you hear Ayla's mic? Yeah, because it sounds low on the Talk, Ayla. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Because you sound alone on the stream. Because I'm listening to both yeah. sounds. Let us know how Ayla's mic sounds, family. So you can hear you fine. Okay, I can hear it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Can't hear you fine, nice and cool. Yeah, we're just trying to get everything crispy and crispy as we go, family. Yeah. Yeah. Peace and love to the family. All right. So I'm about to do this, family. I'm about to do this. I'm about to take it down. Look at that. Look how smooth that was. You see that? That's the smoothness right there, family. <laughs> What's up with the family? Y'all know who it is, family. You know who the face is. It's the other pop check. No mask. And we on apologetically. No matter. That's right, family. Yeah. Now, I'm hearing a little crunchiness in one of the mics. I think it's yours, Ayla. This mic say. Can you talk? Welcome, everyone. Uh It's cool. It's cool to you. It must be my headphones. It's your headphones. That's what I'm saying. This sounds louder than yours. All right, right, cool. So, peace and love to the family. My name is Aaron Bellucci Jackson. That's right. Um, I'm Michelle, aka Mickey. Jackson. I happen to be a law. Yeah, 
And with an unapologetic no mask. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hopefully the family is doing well out there. Everything is going well. Everything is good. Mm-hmm. We are currently in Kigali, Rwanda right now. That's right. We're chilling. Um, yeah, we got our podcast vibes on right now. We got a good show. But before we get into everything, the beautiful <laughs> wife has a couple of announcements for you, fam. All yes. right, all right. Again, peace, love, light, everything that is good to all of our beautiful family out there, all the viewers and subscribers. So um, I want you to check out this new online shop called Visual Design Creatives or VD Creatives on Etsy. And the website is www.etsy.com forward slash UK forward slash shop forward slash VD Creatives. And the owner, her name is Esther. And uh, so it started off as a designer mug shop, as she said, uh, three months ago, but she felt inspired to expand. So, um, and uh, Esther designs uh, and sells various items such as t-shirts and general men and women's wear, like skirts and shorts, homewares like mugs for all occasions, cushions, pillows, uh, accessories like tote bags and duffel bags, fanny packs, backpacks, masks, laptop cases, etc. Beautiful website, by the way. Please check her items out. She uses African print material creatively and includes Pan-African designs. She has a Love Africa collection out now and plans to expand with new products due out this week. So an example, quotes and pictures of black heroes on mugs, t-shirts, and uh, totes, travel bags, and more. Her products are of high quality and low cost. And here's the best thing. Free shipping anywhere in the world. So please go on and support the sister. Check out the website and um, grab you something nice. Grab a gift for a friend, family member, what have you. Shout out to uh, her shop, Visual Design Creatives. Nice. We'll put that in the yeah. chat section yeah. for you now. Yeah, we definitely need that in the chat room. Make sure you uh, support the sister in the business. Yeah. Definitely a good, definitely. good book. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, um, so we talked to the, the fellas for a quick second. Manhood is not a given. Uh, one can uh, not just be a man. Manhood must be taught. And moreover, there must be a criteria, test, and requirements to determine his eligibility for manhood. With that said, the criteria for manhood manuals are a great start. Where can you find them? So you can find them at LegacyProductionsLLC.com. And that's www.LegacyProductionsLLC.com. Um, and they offer practical basic skills training. Every black boy should know if he is to be a responsible and productive young man. They have a plethora of other uh, topics, literature on their website. Please check them out for family planning. Um for the future generations, all that good stuff. Man, shout out. They have a great website. Check out their products and their literature. Again, that's www.legacyproductionsllc.com. Check them out right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is uh, Mickey's microphone cool? Because um, I can't really hear you in my headphones, but still, the mic's See, that's what I'm saying. The headphone sound cool. is way different. I'm listening to the stream right now. I can hear everything okay, on the stream. Cool, I'm cool. listening to both. Yeah. Yo, we got the that's unknown traveler in the building. What's up, family? Hey. I'm going to shout out the family real quick. What's yeah. up with the family? <laughs> Hold on. All right, let me do this real quick. Yeah, we got the unknown traveler in the building. What's up to... um? Oh man, hold on, that's the wrong way. What's up to uh, Dawn? We got Dawn Cole in the building. We got Jay Williams currently in the building. We got High Vibe. Greetings from Jersey. Yeah, in the building. Michelle's in the building. What's up, family? Boom, yeah. When Kaiser gets too close to Mike, it becomes Muffy. Okay. Okay. Right. Too close. Yeah. So Thank let you me know. Family. Thank you. Let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Loom Will. We needed that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, we so good. Let me know family. you can still hear me from this. What's up, A4? Yeah, I made it. Yeah, you here. Live and direct with the unapologetic nomads. That's right, family. We in the yes. building. Shout out to all the beautiful people out there. So, so the family. Let me cut this down real quick. Yeah, let's ask the family a few questions. See how the day has been going. So, as everybody knows, um, We've been on lockdown. I think what's this like the fifth day? Yeah, fifth day. It's the uh, yeah, fifth day. Fifth day of uh, lockdown and um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, 
how you been holding up? Like, how's the life now been treating you? And have you been still been able to do the things that you wanted to do and get around and do the things that you got to get around and do? Yeah, I can say it's been, uh, everything's been pretty good, you know? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's actually helps uh, me to be able to get some work done, focus on some other projects and uh, be a lot more, I think all of us, a lot more creative Yes. Um, in the things we're trying to do. So definitely. Sometimes you need that time to like to still yes. and plan to still plan and you know yes. dig more into yourself and your creativity. Mm-hmm. Facts. So have you been digging into yourself and into your creativity? Absolutely. Okay. You know, information is what I love and teaching is what I love. I'm so excited about this new webinar that's coming up on this Saturday. So um, putting everything together for that and um, touch bases with our our wonderful guest speaker. So we have a great great. Webinar coming up for you guys Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Yeah, uh, for you guys. And uh, those who have registered already can't wait to be able to chop it up with you guys and talk and exchange some great, great ideas. Those who have not and you are um, yeah. riding in line, you might want to go ahead and uh, register before things get kind of full. The seats are filled up, but um, definitely, definitely great things coming. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, Ava. This lockdown, how's it been treating you? How's everything been going? Have you been able to uh, use your time wisely? Yes, I have. (laughs) Very good because, you know, your time to sit down, chill. You know, I get get my score done, you know, getting things done, getting my heart, getting more into that, you know, getting more into my gaming, trying to get used to that. Yeah, it's been good. It's good I had time to sit down and get things done. Yeah, yeah, that that's you know what we actually need this time to get some things done. Like, we do. Um, yesterday, I finally was able to get that video done. With, mm-hmm. uh, my weight mm-hmm. loss journey, mm-hmm. which um, I've been meaning to put that video up a while ago. I just didn't have the time to sit down and actually do it, so I finally got to do it. And I hope that inspires, you know, if it just inspires one person to you know to stick to your goals <laughs> and things like that. You know, that's that's good for me. You know. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful to have uh, been able to go through that so that I can yeah. help others to reach their goals as well, family. Yes. Um, right. and shout out to my cousin Jesse. Yeah, because he really helped me out. Yeah. 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 And um, I just want to say I'm proud of you. Um, I think I told you like, oh, how many times yesterday, today. Yeah. I loved it. It was interesting. Yeah, it was and I know it helped a lot of people. And um, that's something you've been saying you want to do for a long time to share that journey. Yeah. I'm glad you did that. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. <laughs> so Natasha Muhammad says that all we need is the green screen and then we can have the full web report <laughs> set. Yes, family. Yes, yeah. that's coming soon. I, I got to, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a weather, I'm, you know, I like the YouTube thing and, you know, being a father and a husband, but the weather is within yeah. my spirit. <laughs> <laughs> You know the weather is with is in my spirit, family. So yes, oh, that's coming. All right, I'm gonna be giving y'all the weather. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I should just stay where I'm at, like the galley weather, or if I should just do universal weather. I'm still <laughs> trying to figure that out. Family. Oh man! Yeah. Shout out to you, Natasha Muhammad. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So we have an interesting show today. Um, I think we're still trying to. Um, Get in contact with our good friends. Let's go ahead and get our guests ready. Right. Yeah, so we're getting everything together. We got something good for you today, family. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because it's a little different experience. Like when people visit Rwanda and they're on lockdown, you know, like Rwanda's on lockdown. Can you still go out and do things? Is everything <clears> locked down <throat> to the point where you can't even get out the house? You know, like what's it like being on lockdown as a tourist, you know, in Rwanda? Mm-hmm. You know, and you will find that out today, family. Yes, right. yes. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna exactly. actually put the link back in here and uh, see if that'll work. All right. <clears throat> cool, cool. <clears throat> yeah, but it's um, oh, it's been going pretty good, you know. Mm-hmm. Again, I know it's early for you guys over there, but we always thank you for tuning in yes. and uh, checking us out. Um, having so much fun, you know. I don't know what you guys. We have a special, special guest today for you. 
Right. So, one, four, three. Thank you so much. Hello, yes. Family. And it was an inspiring video. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, family. Yes. Thank you. So, Thank we're you. going to introduce right. our special guest. I let my beautiful wife do it. All right. All right. So, we have a special, special guest. Uh, we're going to be talking to in just a moment. She is special to us as well. Yes. She is, man, a, a friend that we uh, made back in, oof. Wow, we were living in the UAE. Oh, yeah, yeah we've been known, known each other for a long time. I think time. when we first got long there. Time. Long yeah. time. And she's pretty much like family. Um, and it's a pleasure to have her on the show today. And um, just to kind of chop it up with her and see what's going on with her and her experiences. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring her in. The one and only Miss Deidre Williams is yeah. with us today. <laughs> Hi, sis. How are you? Can you hear? Can you hear us? Okay, I hear you guys. I hear. Hold on. Got it. I okay. think there is okay. two yeah. mics yeah. going on. <laughs> yeah. We hear you. Okay, hold on. I got I got two mics going on at the same time, so I'm okay. hearing you from before. Okay. And that, I don't know why it's doing that. Um, what we're going to do is, uh, let me see. Yeah, you might have to turn your TV down or something so you can just hear it in your headphones if you can do that or your laptop. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we're now? good. Yeah. yeah I had to turn off the mic from the other video. <laughs> okay. So we're good right. now. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. And it's so awesome to see you. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. too. I miss yes. you guys. How's things going? Everything is good. Well, I know everything's going great because I've been watching your videos. So oh. y'all, y'all are doing awesome jobs. Yeah. Hey, look, it's so big. I can't oh. believe it. <laughs> And for those of you watching, this is a fabulous young lady here. We have one with us today. Again, her name is Deidre Williams. We're longtime friends uh, since we all lived in the UAE. So, Deidre, for the viewers, can you just give them a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and um, then where you're coming from? Okay. Originally, I'm from Alabama. By way of Texas, right. <laughs> by way of the UAE. Right. <laughs> so I've been um, I've been in the UAE for seven. I was in there for seven years. Seven years I've been in the UAE um, teaching. I um, special education teacher, general ed teacher, um, first through fifth grade. So yeah. Um, now I am just trying to get through this last year in the UAE. <laughs> here. So, um, okay. now let's talk about how we met. <laughs> I think it's how long okay. we've known each other. Do you remember when we first met? And we met, how how we met. It was another special person to us. <laughs> yeah, we, I met you guys through Shawana. Yes. My LS, my road dog. Yes, shout out to Shawana <laughs> Jackson. Yes, and yeah. John May. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. We actually work together at the same school now. Oh, right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's yes, good to have my LS awesome. there. I hear you. And that was, what, 2015, 2016-ish? Well, we got there in 2014 because me and Shawana came in the, in the same group, in the first group in 2014. Yeah. Um, I think it was 2015 when y'all came? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And I think we have, I met you at her house. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. And I think we could have just been yeah, yeah, we um, um, 2014 group, 2015 group was a good group. We we just yeah. all kind of clicked and became family and just looked out for each other from that point on. So it's been uh, family vibes from UAE and beyond. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Because we still got family in Malaysia and China mm -hmm. and Korea. So it, 
they've spread it out, but we still together. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. One thing I can say about um, the community we have in the UAE is that, you know, as we travel around in different countries, the community we have in the UAE is a lot more tight knit and stronger yeah. than any other country we ever been to. Yeah. You know, yeah, that, that's facts. It's yeah. a good community out there. Right. Right? It is. It yeah. is. Yeah. And I think it's there's, beautiful there's, how we're all still so connected, even mm-hmm. though we're in different places now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we were um, definitely taking care of each other and was, you know, we were like our own little family away from family when there was an emergency we all pulled together and you know looked out for each other and we still do that now even from afar you know we video chatting and all that stuff still works <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah so um visiting rwanda so what was your first um before <laughs> Y'all keep pointing here. Like, what's that? <laughs> I can't see that far. Like, that's why I'm not doing it because I can't see. Yeah. You, you say it. Okay. I can't see that far. <laughs> All right. Um, so, since we're still on the UAE, what was your experience like there? And then, what did you do? Uh, you know, some highlights, some different things that you did there that you still remember. Them, some remember okay. Um, one thing about the UAE that I love is that it's central to um, traveling. That's the one thing I, I really love about it is that um, you're able to fly about the world from that point and um, see things and experience cultures. Um, the UAE itself is a very unique culture. It's, um, it, it's beautiful the way the people um, treat you. Uh, if they like you, they love you. And I mean, yes. they will do anything for you. Um, I have a friend uh, there now who, when my granddaughter came over at three and she turned four years old, she had a, she gave her a birthday party. And to this day, my granddaughter is nine. And she says, I remember when I had the princess wedding at the, at the palace and she, wow. it was an amazing birthday party that I probably will never be able to mm. give her. But it mm. it lasted all weekend. It lasted three whole days, <laughs> and it started on a it started on a Thursday, and it ended yeah. on a Saturday night late. And I actually had to say, okay, this is over. We're done. <laughs> no more party. <laughs> Because they were just going on and on, and it went from a kids party to um, a, a after five ball gown type party, princess. And I mean, they came dressed. We had a seven course outside meal. We had um, probably about six nannies. We had uh, clowns. We had popcorn machines we had shelves we had servers we had and this was for a four-year-old birthday party so when i say if they like you they love you and they'll do anything for you even as a teacher if the if the um, parent loves you as a teacher you they believe in gifts they believe in doing they believe in inviting you over um, this same parent, she still contacts me and she'll say, we're going to London for two weeks. I want you to come. You don't pay for anything. I pay for everything. I just want you to come. And I have to I always tell her, no, I can't go. I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, it's a beautiful country. It's uh, beautiful people. They, um, this is, I think this year or last year was the year of tolerance. And when, when I say this, the year of tolerance, they, they have, um, Christian churches, they have, um, all, any, any religion church that you think of, they have it there. They built it. They, they allow for people to, um, worship the way they worship. They, they are amazing group of people that is inclusive, Nice. And so nice. I can't I can't stop talking about the UAE because it really is an amazing, amazing place. But be yeah. when you go to teach, just be ready to 
to be challenged. <laughs> You're going to be challenged. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be challenged. Yeah, so true. come with your game face. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. And um, yeah, I can definitely say it's like they go big or not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Everything, yeah. You do Everything they do all. is big or oh, not at all. They don't believe in half doing anything. <laughs> doing anything. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. They don't they're gonna put both their feet in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So I think you want to answer something about the oh yeah. Um, yeah, your question. Cool. All right, let me read this first before I travel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So uh what sparked your interest in coming to Rwanda? Mm-hmm. Well, I wanted to I've, it's always been my dream. Once I retire, I wanted to do a bed and breakfast. And um, I just never thought about doing it in another country. And then um, I, by me being in the UAE and traveling and stuff, I, you know, I've stayed in a couple of uh, B&Bs and I'm like, ah, I think I could do this. I could do this. So, you know, Rwanda is just um, watching um, your videos and and doing research on my own and stuff like that. I decided that you know maybe this may be it. I'm not sure. Still, I'm still looking. I'm making a decision, but Rwanda was a good place to start. Nice, nice, <clears throat> nice. So speaking of that, how was your transition into the country? Like the airport experience, settling <laughs> into a, a place to stay. So how was that? Experience? Well, I I have to say that they're very organized at the airport. You gonna go from the gate when you land to where you go and get your get your passport done. You they're gonna you know get your passport stamped. You gonna they're gonna walk you to the next point where you're going to get your PCR test done. And then they're going to take, you know, tell you to go outside and wait. They have taxis out there to take you to your hotel and you have to stay in the hotels that they have um, set up for incomes, uh, for people coming in for the 24 hours until you get your results from your PCR test. Um, all these things also you have to set up before you come. So, you know, mm-hmm. A day before you get ready to fly, once you get all your information, there's a um, a site online. You go on there, you put in your information, they give you a number, and then you just, it's just really, really smooth. Um, the mm-hmm. hotels are beautiful. The people are the best. I mean, mm-hmm. when I tell you they're the best, they're the best. They come in, they welcome you. They, you know, it's, it's really great. Just smooth. Mm. Nice. 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 Now, um, I remember in the UAE living there mm-hmm. for like I think we lived for like four or five years. Mm-hmm. And uh, one thing that stands out in the UAE <laughs> is customer service. Oh, I man. think they oh, have man. some of the best customer service that yeah. I've ever yeah. witnessed. Now, um, have you? That's right. You came now when you got here. Was it during the lockdown or was were things still open? They were. They were. It was open when I first came. So okay. the first week that I was here, it was kind of open. Oh, uh, nice. So, so, yeah. How was the customer service here, if you experienced any customer service compared to the UAE? The customer say, uh, well, <laughs> nothing compares to the UAE <laughs> when it comes to customer service. Um. <laughs> They, here it was, it, they were awesome. They were great. But uh, customer service in the UAE is just, I, I, I haven't found a place yet that compares to the UAE when it comes to customer service. Yeah. 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 Their yeah. UAE is just, if nothing else, they could stand on that, being number one mm-hmm. in that. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. True. The customer yeah. service is all the yeah. Definitely. I've only gone to <laughs> <laughs> I've only gone to one hotel that in the UAE that I was I was just totally taken aback from. And um 
really to think of it, you know, being in the, in the U.S., you would think nothing of it. You probably wouldn't, you know, but for the UAE, I was just, I was, I was taken aback. I was like, <gasps> and it, it was all because doing breakfast buffet, you know, we were eating and um, the lady walked over and she says, uh, do you need anything else? And I said, um, I needed some water. And she said, if uh, over on the buffet, go over there and the water's on the on the buffet. You just have to pour your water. And I was just so like, oh, my God, I have to pour, pour my own water. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to really think about it. I was like, you are getting so small. Stop this. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I was yeah, yeah. I was yeah, in the spoiled. West. He was spoiled. I was in yeah. the West. So it was just like it was like totally different. It's a different okay. world in the mm-hmm. West. Even though yeah. customer service mm-hmm. was perfect, but it it was just not as light in Abu Dhabi or Dubai or, or LA. But you know, yeah. but I was just so Awestruck. I was like, I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> gotta pour water. I gotta pour my own water. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, it was, that service will spoil you. Yeah. 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 It it has right. you rotten. And every time I go home to Texas, I'm just totally just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Yeah, we we I want to sit at the gas station, just sitting in the car for about ten minutes. Like, why is this guy for the gas? And I forgot <laughs> I was at home. Yeah. Oh yeah, you get right into the core. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we have a question from Mr. Hillary in the chat. He says, um, "Unapologetic Nomads, peace and blessings to you and the beautiful sister speaking." Could you ask the sister about the quality of life, how the economy works, and how they do business there in the UAE? Thanks. Right. Okay, so the um, the quality of life is amazing. I'm so everything is like on Thursday when workday is over and the weekend come. It's all about family for them. Is you know I know some teachers you know at two o'clock they done. Don't ask me to do nothing. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I'm just sitting here waiting on the clock out because I'm going to have dinner with my family, you know, and they're they're all about family. They they don't believe in that after after school, after work type thing. It's when you clock out, it's all about your family. Um, my mm-hmm. principal, my first um, my first two years in the UAE, I was just I had the mindset of, OK, I need it. I'm here. I need to make good impression. I need to do all this work. I need to prepare. I spent my weekends preparing, 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 staying at the school, preparing, preparing, preparing. And one day I think it was about 430. I was coming home um, from work. And my principal, um, apparently, which I didn't know, he had a friend living in my apartment complex. And so as I was pulling up, he pulled up and we were getting out the car. And he's like, Miss Deidre, where you come from with all those books? I said, Mr. Allah, I just I'm just coming from school. I had to do some, you know, do some work after school. He said, three o'clock. No, finish class. Finish. We do not work after school. <laughs> Oh, you yes. you stop work, <laughs> you come home, you be with your family. No work after school. After three o'clock, no. And after that, I was like, you sure <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so ever since then, I've been like the total like, uh, I'm like everybody else. Uh, it's two o'clock. I'm just waiting for the clock. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but the quality of quality of life is is awesome. Um, they mm-hmm. they do believe in relaxation, family time. You you know, weekends you see people <laughs> sitting on any grassy area that they can find with some shade. They're mm-hmm. out there with their families, barbecuing with mm-hmm. their families, with their kids. They the malls are packed with families and kids having fun. Mm-hmm. Quality of life is amazing. Um, business wise. Um, and I do think that I believe that they've made some changes in the way they do business. Now it used to be that um, in order to have a business um, an Arabic person, Emirati person would have to own 51% of that business in order for you to open mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But I think that it has changed. So I don't I don't really know what the new um, law is, but I think that it's more in favor of bringing more businesses in without the added having an Emirati owning part of that business, the largest mm-hmm. part of that business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, that's about all I can tell you about the business world. Right. I'm just okay. a teacher. <laughs> okay. Ava? Oh, Mr. Hilly has another question. Mm-hmm. Could you also ask her about, are there any strict rules with the dress code there? How is the climate during the year also? It's 650,000 degrees in the summer from <laughs> April, from April to November is sizzle season. Okay, yes. if you're coming in the summertime, just don't expect anybody to be outside during the day because it's just mm-hmm. absolutely too hot. It's like 120 mm-hmm. degrees for real yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. in the UAE during the summer. Even the Emiratis mm-hmm. leave the country to get away from the heat mm-hmm. because it's way too hot. But um, in the winter, the fall and the winter, and I'm going to say the fall doesn't, it gets cooler. So it'll probably be like a hundred degrees or 95 degrees in the fall. <laughs> but the winter you, you may get probably like two or three weeks of in the sixties, maybe, yeah. Yeah. maybe. Mm-hmm. And that's probably mm-hmm. from like December to about, I want to say maybe February, Mm -hmm. February or early part of March is cooler. So it may get to 60, but you'll see the Emiratis walking around with fur caps on, earmuffs, gloves. (laughs) The kids come to school and they be wrapped up and you be like, "Um, where y'all going? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. They be freezing. (laughs) But the weather, like yeah. Code? Hmm. How about like the dress code? Is it like a, a certain dress code that you have? The to wear? dress code. I'm gonna say the dress code is how you want to dress. I don't really see um, anyone just being really strict unless you're going to work. Say the school, you have to dress a certain way. Not always, not in a buy or anything like that, at least for most schools. Um, But, you know, you want to be respectful of that culture. So, you know, at least wear, you know, sleeves to your elbow. Um, Don't wear your tightest pants or skirts. But, you know, make sure your, your, your cleavage is covered. But I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's just normal clothing to me. Um, I've seen people that I'm like, child, you need to go put some clothes on. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've seen that where I'm even saying that. But you know, mm-hmm. I'm just being respectful of the culture of the people. Um, I say just dress. You don't have to dress modest, but just you know, just dress i mean i wouldn't wear shorts you know cut too short i wouldn't wear you know i've seen people with the mid riff shirts on stuff like that there's no strict dress code it really isn't it's just when you go to work when you go you know some buildings say you know dress modest if you go into the mall you might see on the doors they might have say you know might see you can't wear short short skirts or short shorts which uh, i have to say i've seen those in the mall too nobody's gonna come and jump you and and arrest you and you know handcuff you and drag you out the mall they're not gonna do that you know they're very very respectful people people even the police are just i i think even when they're, they're you're doing something wrong they're smiling and you and being very respectful Mm-hmm. So yeah, nice. I've I've gotten pulled over by the police before, and I thought, you know, oh my God, you know, that American me came oh, in, and I was like, oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? And he yeah. like he walked up to the w- window and said, "Good morning, sister." Said, Good morning. <laughs> yeah. And he had this beautiful smile, and he he <laughs> said he gave me a box, and he's and I said, "Well, what is this?" And he's like, "Just s- smile." And it was a box with water, the cupcakes, um, P 
piece of fruit. And I mean, they're, they're just like that. Police are not the police there. <laughs> they're just not. They're more the small cops. Mm. Yeah. You know something yeah. else I found interesting? Like, mm -hmm. I've heard stories about people like, you know, getting out their car and leaving their wallet on top of their car right. by mistake and just like going to work or something. And they come back and their wallet is like still on the car. Still, yeah. like, still there, they yes. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've I've walked out of a store and left my purse sitting on the counter. I mean, not on the counter, on uh it was in a shoe store and I left it sitting on the seat. And I've gotten mm -hmm. like all through the mall. I think I was in a whole nother store and was and mm -hmm. went to look for my purse. And I was just like in straight panic mode because I'm like, oh my God, they didn't come because I, I carry my passport and stuff. So in my head, I was thinking somebody got my passport. I traced myself back to that store and my purse was still sitting there. And the guy say, I see you leave it there, miss. I watch it. I was like, oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a totally different environment there. Totally different. But it will mess you up for when you go back to America. Oh, oh yes, it will. It will. It will. You, you jump out your car yeah, nah, with it running to go into the store oh. and yeah. come back and think your car still sitting there. You'll be messed up. Mm -hmm. nope. yeah. But in the UAE, that's what they do. They leave their car running. They go into the store. They shop. They come back out. Get in their car. Their wallet, purse, phones, everything laying on the seat. Yeah. Nobody touches mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. I do remember that. That's amazing. Right. Yeah. 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 So speaking on those things, so how, in your opinion, how easy would it be for someone to <laughs> transition from the UAE, that lifestyle, to Rwanda? <clears throat> would that be an easy transition? I think um, it would be, pr it would be pretty easy because to me, if you, if you've been living in another country outside of America, um, you, you kind of learn to adapt to different cultures. And I think a, a lot of times we coming from America, we forget that we can't be American in somebody else's country. So, um, I think that it's a mindset. You have to be willing to transition. You have to really be willing to evolve and get get involved in the culture and with whatever country you're in. So coming from the UAE to here, um, I think is really easy for me. I, I'm a homebody, so um, <laughs> my thing is getting out and enjoying this weather because this weather here is amazing. I mean. <laughs> Beautiful. My first thought was there is no air condition in this apartment. I'm, I'm yeah. apartment. <laughs> but I find myself doing the day with the little throw blanket over me sitting up watching mm -hmm. TV or something like that because the windows are open and I'm just like, this is great weather. It yes. is amazing weather. Is The site is beautiful. The people that I've I've met are amazing. They are wonderful people. Um, just, just getting to, you know, I'm, I'm trying to learn the language. Um, probably won't <laughs> because <laughs> I, I still don't know much of the UAE uh, of Arabic and I've been there seven years. So, um, <laughs> But um, the people here, the transition would be amazing. You just have to have the mindset to just come and and engage yourself in the culture here. You know? yes. nice. Yeah. Nice. And not not come with the um, American mindset um, right. that we have sometimes. Yeah. OK. okay. Can you go in like detail? Like what, what is an American mindset for, for those who don't know? Um, although our passport, our blue passport is very, um, important and it's, it's like one of the most sought out, uh, sought after passports, um, it also make us think sometimes that we are superior to other people, to yeah. other cultures, because they are not, they don't live the way we live in the States. 
You know, mm. we, you know, we believe in the big houses and the more stuff we have, the more important we are. Um, mm. Here in this country, it's not like that. And in, in a lot of other countries, it's not like that. It's about family. It's about um, being happy. Um, and sometimes we forget that coming from America and we approach people in other countries with the with the mindset of um, it's what I say. What you mm -hmm. what you think or what you feel doesn't matter because I'm the one with the blue passport. Mm -hmm. And I think we need that we need to get out of that mindset and really understand what's important. And I think yeah. being here, getting involved with the, with the culture of whatever country you go into, really emerge yourself in, in the culture, you'll start to kind of come out of that and really realize how simple life really can be if you right. just, you know, <clears throat> just kind of melt in a little bit. Nice. <laughs> And um, we have a question. Have you been to any other African countries or is this your first? I went to uh, Johannesburg mm -hmm. and um, wow. was it Cape Town? Okay. Yeah, okay. I went to um, Egypt and right. I still say that's yes, still African. Okay. okay. Egypt, yes. where else have you been? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think that's it. That's That's it right now. Yeah, yes. but yes. I plan yes. to do all of them. All right, okay, all yeah. right, yeah. okay, sis. Yeah. Nice. Plan to do yeah. all of them. Yeah, that's our plan too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's it's really important. I and that everyone get to experience another culture, not mm -hmm. just go and be a visitor. Mm -hmm. um, not just go in on vacation because a lot of times when we go on vacation, we we go to a resort. And, you know, we all about the, you know, living that resort life. I mean, really go and get and visit the people. Yes. Really visit the people. And mm -hmm. it'll give you a whole different mindset. Yes. It really yes. will. Yes. yes, definitely. That's true. Definitely. That's true. Yeah. Kind of uh, connecting with the people. You have to. Yeah. Exactly. To kind of really understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, oh. South Africa, how would you stay in South Africa? Or visit hmm? to South Africa? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. You South Africa, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, so uh, yeah. where'd you go to like Cape Town, Joburg? I went to Joburg and Cape Town. Right. Okay, <clears throat> so how was that experience? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Some say that again. Said, how, how was that experience in uh, Joburg? Joburg was a um, uh, was really great. We went during the um, I want to say it was the Christmas break we went in um, to Soto in Joburg and um, Stella's, um, Mandela's home, old home, and um, went to um. A couple of the museums, and it was really nice. Okay, frozen. I don't know if you're yeah, hearing this or not. I think the stream was. The stream was okay. Okay, what did you use yet? Okay, hold on one second. Yeah, Okay, say something. Hello. Yes, okay. you're clear. I think your your screen is just frozen, but you're clear. Yeah, you're clear. Say it again. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Right. Okay, what did y'all miss? <laughs> <laughs> you tell us about uh, your experience in Joburg, South Africa. Okay, Joburg, yeah, Joburg was really nice. We uh, visit Soto. We visit the museum. Um, what else we do? Um, we went to um, a couple of the um, little towns that they had. I, it's been so long ago, I can't remember exactly where, but... Um, <clears throat> it was very nice. We had a really good time there. And then and we stayed four days. And then I flew to um, uh, Cape Town. Oh, while I was there, I went to, um, yeah, it was there. In Joburg, I went to one of the safaris. 
So I went on a safari for an overnight safari, and it was amazing. We had breakfast with the hippos, and um, yeah, and, and you know saw some some lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> 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 it was fun. We had a really good time. And then um, stayed in Joburg for four days. And then I flew to Cape Town to stay two days. Nice. And Cape Town was nice. Yeah, it was. Cape Town is like right on the water. I didn't get a chance to go and do any of the uh, sightseeing things except for just right there on the water because you had to make it was too far out and, and I didn't have enough time. So, okay. um, <clears throat> yeah, I should have flipped it. Because I could have did Joburg in two days and did Cape Town like in four days. Because I think that there was a lot that I missed there. But it's on my list to go back. And I plan to do a week in Cape Town so that I can really get to see some things. So, But the weather was beautiful at Christmas time. It was, it was I think it's during their summer. Yeah, they have summer. Okay. It's flipped. Okay, summer. that was their summer during Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So the weather was amazing. It was beautiful. Nice, nice, nice. 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 Yeah. So. Um, oh, and I did go to Zanzibar. I forgot yes. about it. Yes. Yes. All right. Yeah, we did yeah. five days in Zanzibar, and I had the most amazing time. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. It was so nice. We um ended up going to uh there was a music festival going mm -hmm. on so we did get a chance to do a little bit of a music festival we did a lot of sightseeing we went to um we snorkeled we went to this island and we had um seafood right out the water where they cooked it for mm -hmm. us um <clears throat> we went to the uh spice farm we mm -hmm. what else did we do Oh my goodness, we did a couple of things. The re the hotel we stayed in um, would go down to the dock every uh, night and get us fresh fish to oh, cook for man. us right. every yeah. night. Goodness. And so that was that was amazing. It was really good because you know I just had them cut the head off. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna need you to move the head before I eat it. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, it was it was amazing. Um, Zanzibar was great. Nice. nice. All right. So, uh, have you had? Um, were you able to do anything in Rwanda since you've been here? I have not because the first week I was here, I was here. You know, all about the business, trying to get you know my. 47 houses and villas out of the way that I was intended to see. So I, you know, my focus was on that. And so that nice. week I did that. And then um, right after that, they shut down and we went into lockdown. So I've been like in the house since then, <laughs> locked in. <laughs> well, not you know locked in. Are, but, yeah, but just you so know, you know, can't. you are a tourist. Tourism is never shut down. You can do what you want. It's the tourists just make sure you take your, you know, your quick test. Right, right. Your, but I, I, res I respect these people and their, their laws and what they're doing. And I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate what they're doing. So I respect. I hear you. I'm full. All right. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, well, you get to do some things soon. Um. There's a lot to see. This country is absolutely beautiful, stunning. Um, but when is oh, the last from the time? from my window? It's amazing. Oh, the views! There's a view that just to yeah. die for. Yeah. <laughs> I love sitting on the. And property. I just I just sit in the window and look at the view and the birds yeah. singing. Isn't it beautiful? It is, yeah. I, I've just it's like right outside the window, and they just yeah. every day they just sing every day, and I'm just like I love it. Like clockwork, mm -hmm. and there's so many colors. It's so mm -hmm. nice, nice. It's a beautiful country. It is. Yes, it, is. it is. And I hope mm -hmm. you get a chance to see more of it. It is oh, mind boggling. I Especially will. The, you know, the volcanoes, the lakes, everything is beautiful. Um, Those were oh, all on my list. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Nice, nice. And we hope you get to do those things, definitely. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. When was the last time you um, visited home, back home in the States? Oh, it's been two years. It's been oh, two years God. because I usually go once a year. 
I use it go once a year. And I, well, no, it has been two years. It's been two and a half years because I went home um, in, this is 2021. I went home 2019, Christmas of 2019 for my daughter's uh, graduation from college. Mm -hmm. So I went, went home for that. And then I was planning to go home that summer, which I usually do every summer, go home. But then there was the lockdown. So I didn't get a chance to go then. And so um, this year, I'm when I leave here, I'm going home okay. <laughs> before okay. I head back to the UAE. All right. And Ayla okay. has a question for you. Nice. So, like, do you ever get homesick of the states? Yeah. I do get homesick. I do. I do. Um, especially for, you know, my grandbabies. And um, but I do a lot of videotaping, you know, video chatting, uh, lots of pictures. Um, my oldest grandbaby, who is nine, she um, sends me messages all the time. Um, my the five year old, she sends me messages, but kind of incoherent <laughs> just not really sure what she's trying to re relay but she's um she's starting her she started her own little uh video um youtube channel oh, where she's okay. uh doing yeah she's doing like um what she, she was trying to, she was showing me how to draw something oh. but she has the whole little video you know like um if you like what you see subscribe to my channel <laughs> and she, she she doing all this stuff and i'm just sitting there like okay <laughs> so she's she's adorable and then um the grandson he was just a newborn when i was uh home for my middle daughter's um graduation so now he is two and he's got a whole conversation and i just really don't know what he's saying but he's, wow. he's talking yeah he sends me lots of kissy faces and um <laughs> but yeah oh, <laughs> yeah i miss so my kids mm -hmm. i i like to uh you know every year we plan a trip um, to go somewhere. So they'll, you know, they'll meet me somewhere. Like, um, they met me, uh, here in the UA, uh, met me in the UA, UAE one Christmas. And then mm -hmm. the next Christmas we met in New York. And then the plan was for last summer for us to go to, to meet in Bali. But, mm -hmm. um, because of the lockdown, we didn't get a chance to do that. So this summer we, we won't be doing anything. Uh, we might drive like to Galveston and spend the weekend or something like that in the Galveston. But hopefully next year we'll be in Bali. They'll meet us, meet in Bali and we'll hang out, something like that. Or maybe if things work out, they may be coming to Rwanda. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So we'll right. see. Nice. So speaking of that, we have a, uh, or Ella, Ella, one more question. Um, oh yeah, that's my last question. And then, um, do you miss anything about the States? Like little things that are in the States that may not be on the other side of the world? I miss uh, Lifesaver gummies. Lifesaver <laughs> <laughs> I miss Lifesaver gummies. I miss taco trucks. Oh. And, um, yeah, yeah. In my where my house is at the at the beginning of my um my um subdivision, there's a taco truck stand right there. Mm -hmm. So when I'm home every morning, I walk to the taco truck and I get four tacos, <laughs> and then I walk home and I eat them. <laughs> so um yeah i miss tacos um what else do i miss I'm, i definitely miss my kids i miss them but i think because i'm a helicopter mom they're happy that i'm here away so they can breathe so but <laughs> you know yeah Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, yeah, those are things I, I miss family. I definitely miss family. Since I've been away, I've had a couple of um elderly family members die. But um 
I try and, and you know, talk to family a lot while I'm away. I video chat, send texts, stuff like that. So um, it's not as bad because, you know, it's not like I don't talk to them and then mm-hmm. they're gone. So I, I talk to them, you know, I have conversations and stuff. So I just, you know, other than that, I don't miss America too much. Just some food mm-hmm. items and family. Yeah. 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 So you just just said something interesting, like, because um a lot of people ask us questions like, you know, when someone dies, do you fly home every time someone dies, go to the funeral? Or like Mm -hmm. how do you deal with death when you're you know so far away? I I don't think that that that's reasonable to to do that. And for some people, um, they can, but I try to make sure that I talk to my family while I'm away. I, I don't wait until, oh, they're on their deathbed and not, and then trying to connect or trying to show my support for them or show my love for them. Um, that thing of give them, give them their flowers before they die. I, I try to acknowledge my family because when they're gone, they're gone. And whether I'm there or not, you know, they're still going to be gone. So um, I um, I think it's more important that, you know, I could take that whatever money it'll take me to fly home, I could send that home to help out with, with arrangements. I can, you know, there are other things that I can do, you know, that may be important. Mm-hmm. But you know, you, it's it's important to have that connection whether you're there or not. So, and mm-hmm. that will take away from that, you know. Oh, I feel so guilty um, because I'm I'm not there um, uh, because I didn't go to the funeral. Um, I had a relationship with them before they died. So, yeah, mm-hmm. mm. yeah right. so, that's uh, what's important. Yeah, it is. That's right. That's right. So Mr. Hillary has a question. He says, so does the sister have plans besides a bed and breakfast that she would want to open? Maybe she would want to open an education center for black folks to change their Western colonial way of thinking. I, yeah, that's a question. I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I said it with my reflection. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, no, you did good. I did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I said I did good. Um, that, that's never been a... That's never... They never come to my mind, but you know, mm, I, I, <laughs> mm. interesting, right? I'm um, very interesting. Um, no, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> no, I hadn't thought about that. So yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Let me, I need a pen. Yeah. <laughs> Let me put this in my phone. <laughs> Think that about that one. Because, um, I've noticed uh, we do meet a lot of people who come here, and um, just the way of their way of their approach and way of thinking, like if it's their first time out of the states, you know, and didn't live nowhere else, you know, they're a little more aggressive and more like, you know, they want to do this money from back. And it's like mm-hmm. you still got that fast lifestyle, yeah. you know. And mm-hmm. A lot of time. Go to different countries, you have to learn how to just slow it down. So, because yes. everywhere is not as fast as, as the U.S. is, mm-hmm. it's just not that fast. And I think we all we all um, go through that. Because when I got to the UAE, it was it, at first it was difficult for me to understand that you know, I my plan was to get up this morning, go take care of this bill, go take care of that, go take this. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not like that in a lot of countries. You have to slow down because they don't function like that. You know, yeah. my my biggest thing that used to drive me insane is when they say inshallah. And I, you know, I find myself saying, no, no inshallah, no inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need you to say, yes, you're going to do this. Don't tell me inshallah. <laughs> and so, it, you know, I had to understand that, that, you know, no matter how much I stump my feet and, and, pull my hair out. You, you have to get a cut. It's just not going to flow the way you want to. And you need to just take a deep breath, calm yourself and just 
try to work it out. Sometimes it just it's just not going to work in your time frame. It's just not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. And they don't and they absolutely do not believe in letting you drive them up a wall. They're not going to do it. Yeah. Man, facts. Man. Those are actual factuals. So, yeah, uh, but they'll tell you, slow down, slow down, yeah. slow down. <laughs> <laughs> slow down and live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slow down, slow but down. You know, that's, good, that's good advice. You know, a lot of us, we live It advice. is. We're it is. Because and once you, once you, once you leave America and realize that everything is just not about, we work ourselves to death yes. trying to, yes. trying to, trying to get this or, uh, or you know, be better than the next person or, or have what the Joneses have, or, you know, we got to live a certain way or in a certain neighborhood or, you know, wear a certain something. And once you get past that point of that really isn't happiness, that really isn't achievement, mm -hmm. you'll start seeing in other countries how people are just happy with the bare minimum. And if you mm -hmm. got... Mm -hmm. One step above the bare minimum, you know, they looking at you like you living life, mm -hmm. you know, and and it's you have to just take a step. You have to just breathe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Yes. Yeah. Man. Man, thank you so much. I mean, mm -hmm. um, you are so amazing. Um, uh, thank you. And, uh, man, entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I know your students have to have a ball in the classroom, yeah. too. but um, it's so good being. I have to laugh face. at myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even in the classroom, I'm just I'm like, okay, why y'all doing this? Why? Why? <laughs> so, did you teach at a boys' school or, or a girls' school? I just want to ask. My first three years, I taught in a boys' school. And oh it was the hardest three years wow. of my life as a teacher. I was, you know, I was a new teacher. I had only been teaching, licensed teaching for a year before I came here. And so, yeah, they put me in a boys school and I thought I was going to lose it because in, in the UAE, boys are just... Um, they they're just they're just different they they're yeah, taught just, that the things that they do is just boy things that's that's what boys do <laughs> yeah yeah i know he's walking on the roof it's okay he's just boy <laughs> he's just boy. <laughs> he's just boy you know and i'm like yes yes i know i know i know he pushed that boy off the second floor it's okay he's just boy <laughs> And, you know, me, I'm just like, I, did you not just see? He's just boy. He's just boy. He's, calm down. Inshallah. He's just boy. And it just, it took me a minute to just, to get that mindset that that's just the way it is. That's just the way they do things. But it, it, it also, it. You know, when they're coming to the classroom, they want to bring that same behavior. So it's all about teaching them that there's a place and a time for that behavior. My thing was, you can be just boy outside the classroom, but in here, you need to be just students. <laughs> so it was, it was just a, a different mindset. So, you know, my first, I want to say the first two or three months was basically teaching behavior and rules and, and, and how to do things and how to say things. So it, it, it took a while. I had my principal, you know, call me in the office once and one, and one of the parents complained and said that, um, I don't teach the boys. I don't smile at the boys. I don't, I'm not smiling at them. I'm not showing them motherly love. And, you know, he's like, miss, you not show them motherly love. And I said, well, they don't deserve any right now. <laughs> After they follow the rules, get it together. I said, maybe January I can smile at them. But right now they need to understand that they need to follow my rules. So mm -hmm. the same parent is my best friend now. <laughs> Oh. So it is, you know, and a lot of times you have to train the parent in order to train the student. Mm -hmm. 
So once you get the parent on your side, you most likely got the student on your side. So it's just all about the support and how you, you know, how you um, teach, you know, how you teach the parent. Because my thing was always telling them, you know, you want a you want a son that's going to respect you, that's going to grow up to be a man that's going to support his family. I said, that is what I'm teaching him. So when they realized that and, I, and that I don't you know, I'm teaching them things that they actually want their son to know, it gets better. But, you know, mm-hmm. that first three years was crazy. But uh, <laughs> the three years after since those three years, I've been teaching at a um, a mixed school. I taught um, mm-hmm. at a private school uh, for two years. And then I've been at um, this other international school in Abu Dhabi um, for this will be my second year there. So. Um, I like the, the, the schools that have the mix of girls and boys, because sometimes you need a little bit of bitter and sweet, you know, the girls are so sweet. They're so loving. They're just so, oh, miss, your hair is so beautiful. Oh, miss, your skin's so beautiful. And then you have the boy, you know, doing boy things. (laughs) Yeah. Nice, nice. But I nice. I love teaching in the UAE because I've made so many great memories, um, made, made some awesome friendships and some amazing kids. There are really some amazing, beautiful kids there. Yes, there are. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. So again, sis, we definitely appreciate your time and just uh, just being amazing sharing so many things with us Thank all. You. you know, people who are listening so we'll know just how the world really is, you know? And that's that's the purpose of our channel. To show you truth. How it really, really I, is on the ground. I definitely yeah. suggest everybody needs to travel. Mm-hmm. Everybody yes. in America yeah. needs to oh, travel. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They need to yeah. come out of the box and see how mm-hmm. the world really lives. Mm-hmm. And um yes. just yeah, everybody needs to come out of the box. Yeah, yeah. So we can have to have you on a, 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 on a different show again <laughs> sometime in the future. This is amazing. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. And, um, thank for you for having time, me. Part of your day, part mm-hmm. of your day. Thank you so much. And um, <clears throat> we truly love and respect you. And we will see you soon. <laughs> All right, yeah. see you guys soon. <laughs> thank you for having me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You jumping off real fast. <laughs> it said, "Thank you for sharing your experience. Yeah. Thank you so much." Oh man, yeah, that was our good yeah. sister Deidre. Yes, we knew Deidre for a few years. Yeah, few years, yeah. yeah. You know, when the UAE, we were like family. Yeah. Definitely, we still are like family. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. you know, Definitely. and that's the kind of energy that that you know we have wherever we go. You know, mm-hmm. just to have that. Yeah, that family, you know, you know, people who are close, right? You know? yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then her coming to visit that's amazing, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just so <laughs> like upset we, we don't have a chance to like meet physically, you yeah. know. But this was this was beautiful, mm-hmm. yeah. And thank you, Deidre. <clears throat> yes. thank you so much again, yes. And yes. shout out to everybody in the UAE, right? Uh, that's right, yeah. Yeah. a lot of family everybody. still there, yeah. family friends, <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so family, we uh hold on. Yeah, that's for uh Deidre, yeah. yeah. I know it's <laughs> better late than that for family. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and we want to thank all of you for tuning in once again. Yes. Our beautiful, beautiful family out there, viewers, subscribers. And if you, if you like what you saw today, if you ever subscribe, just go ahead and subscribe, push that button. And then don't forget to hit the bell so you can get all the notifications. Now the bell has a menu also, so make sure you select select all notifications for the yeah. bell. And um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's interview with our sister Deidre Williams. Yes. It's simply yes. amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and please uh, stay tuned to our channel. We have some very, very good videos coming up. Um, we actually have a box of mail coming in. We're not going to do like a box opening or nothing, but we're going to like let y'all know like 
you know, the weight of the box, how much everything costs as far as like shipping and things like that. Because we still get questions on the mail and things like that. So, yeah, that's coming soon. This song is a little draggy than, than what I'm, I, I want right now. Hold on, let me see something. Let me switch it up a little bit. Yeah, it's a tad bit draggy than, than what I uh, wanted to do. Yeah. Here we go, fam. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's <clears> it. <throat> yeah, okay. Switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Switch it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh. Yes. Hey. So, peace and love to the family. Yeah. Before we leave, my wife, she's going to freestyle for us. Ah. Maybe do a little uh, <laughs> solo, a song or something. You know oh, what I'm no. saying? Uh, Why? Ava got the backgrounds. All right. Ah. What are we doing? Oh, I thought you were going to do it. Ah. <laughs> I'm going to Peace and love. We love, we appreciate everybody watching. We thank you all for tuning in to the Unapologetic Nomads. Yeah, and I'm going to let the beautiful family say their last words. Yeah. And then we're going to take y'all out, family. Yeah. Thank you all for watching and tuning in. And thank you all for the constant love and support you give the comments. Yeah, don't... Highly appreciate it. All right. Don't forget to check us out at www.unapologeticnomads.com. And for those of you who didn't sign up for the webinar that's coming up this Saturday, you want to do that. Um, we have a lot of gems, a lot of information we want to share with you guys. And um, the link is in the chat. It will also be in the description section. Um, and uh, definitely, those of you who are interested in the Kinder Wanda classes um, yes. can be found on the website as well. We've been having some great classes yes. with the brother who is teaching, doing an amazing amazing job yeah. and um, man so many good things and uh, just being able to support people locally I love it I love it so definitely um, don't forget to check us out also on Instagram at unapologetic underscore nomads that's right family <laughs> and check us out on Twitter all right the unapologetic hold on how I forget the Twitter hold it. on unapologetic no three no like number three. Yeah. no three number three yeah. right. somebody stole the nomads one yeah you need to get that back yeah I'm like yeah. what you do for yeah. real <laughs> yeah <laughs> sell it I buy yeah. it <laughs> yeah. but we love y'all we appreciate y'all family and we the unapologetic nomads and we unapologetic nomadic peace